Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about uh, uh, solid geometry. Um, I'm introducing certain concepts which will be used in all the future um, materials of theoretical kind and problems. Um, so, this is the lecture which is about conical surfaces. Um, I would recommend to view this lecture from unizor.com website because it has um, side notes which basically can serve as a textbook. Um, also, um, I'm planning to um, put a lot of uh, materials into examination part of this website, unizor.com. Um, there is a lot of exams already in, the, uh, in this course, um, especially about algebra and uh, geometry on the plane um, and I am planning to put basically the um, uh, exams for every uh, subject which I'm touching in this course course of advanced math for teenagers uh, the only thing is for exams you have to just register the site is free so registration is free anyway so all right so um, I'm trying to introduce certain concepts in uh, uh, solid geometry and today's topic is conical surfaces. Um, I assume you are already familiar with the previous lectures um, which are introducing certain other uh, elements of uh, solid geometry uh, which are points, lines, planes, um, cylindrical surfaces, um, so right now it's basically a continuation, different kind of surfaces. If you um, are familiar with the lecture which uh, um, explains what cylindrical surfaces is, this would be very much uh, similar to, to, to this. I'm just introducing a concept of a conical surface. So what is a conical surface? Let's assume you have a space curve whatever space curve is. Now, I'm drawing this on the board, which means this particular curve is flat. I, in theory, in solid geometry, this is a three-dimensional geometry, I do not have this requirement. So it's any kind of a curve in the space. So it can be whatever, helix, for instance. Doesn't really matter. So let's assume we have this curve in space. Let's call it C. We also assume that somewhere else um, we have a point, fixed point, let's call it S. Now, what I'm going to do now is the following. Every point on this curve I will connect with a straight line with this fixed point S. So all these uh, points on all these straight lines, they are actually forming some kind of a surface. And, um, well, that's it. This surface is called a conical surface. Now, it's infinite in both directions from this point S, because these are straight lines. They are infinite in both directions. Um, now, the um, this line, uh, this curve, um, which is used to um, to connect the points of which is connecting it, it, it are connecting to uh, to the fixed point S. This called directrix. Directrix, very much similar to cylindrical surface, if you remember it. Now, this fixed point S is the new one. It's called apex. Well, sometimes it's called vertex, but vertex is a more general um, name. I would prefer to call this epic, epic, apex or apex. So, these are just two different words, terminology about the conical surface. Um, and basically, that's it which defines a very, very general conical surfaces. Now, um, let's just um, consider different cases 
which can occur, occur. Let's assume first that we have this uh, curve C, the directress. Uh, let's assume it belongs to some kind of a plane. So I'm introducing a side view on this plane and let's just assume that this is a curve. So we assume that not only this is a flat curve, which means it belongs to one particular plane, let's also assume that this is just a closed um, curve. So it basically encloses some kind of area on this uh, plane. And let's also assume that the point S is somewhere outside of the plane. Now, if I will connect every point Now, it's infinitely Okay Now, in this particular case um, it's appropriate to call this area inside the curve on the plane a base of the conical surface so that's just another kind of terminology which I would like to use sometimes. Now, as you understand, the conical surface has basically two independent halves, if you wish. Um, this piece which connects to the curve and further, and those pieces of the straight lines which are going beyond the um, point S. Um, well, that's that's what it is in practical situations we usually will be considering this case when the directress is uh, a flat curve usually it's um, some kind of a closed curve and um, in most cases we will not consider an entire conical surface but only from this point to this plane this piece without these infinite continuations of it now why we will be considering these because this is now a, some kind of a geometrical object which can have you know volume area whatever are the characteristics the altitude etc that's what we will that's what we will be dealing with However, again, you should understand that it's just a piece of a conical surface which is actually infinite in both directions. Okay. Now, let's just consider a couple of interesting cases. Um, now, the one case which is, uh, I would say, trivial and most likely we will never be dealing with this particular case but I would like actually to present it as an example of a conical surface so let's assume that our directress is a straight line so it's in space but it's a straight line and let's assume that there is something outside the point S the apex which is outside of this line. Now, what would be the conical surface in this case? Well, let's just try to connect each point on this line with, with apex. This is one point. Now, what actually will be the set of all the points on all these lines um, which are connecting apex S with each point on the directors. Well, obviously it will be the plane which passes through this line and this point. So, in this case, a conical, per a, a conical surface is a plane. However strangely it sounds. Now, another example. Also, kind of <laughs> strange, I would say, but nevertheless. Let's assume that our directress is 
a flat circle, a circle which is um, lying on some plane. Let's consider that this board is the plane, so this is my circle. So this is the rectus. And let's assume that apex is right in the middle it in the same plane. Now, what happens in this particular case with uh, a conical surface? Well, again, let's just connect each point on the circle with its center and what will be. These are the lines and what will be a set of all these lines? Well, it will be this particular plane with, wh wh where the circle belongs to. So again, the plane would be a conical surface. Now, these two cases are not really typical and we will never return to these cases again. I just wanted to present them as a little bit unusual uh, conical surfaces. Now, what is a usual conical surfaces? Okay, um, let's consider it this way. Um, let's assume that we have a plane and we have a circle in the plane. Now, the circle looking from a side looks like uh, an ellipse anyway now let's also assume that you have a point s above this um, plane such that its projection or perpendicular to this plane uh, projects to the center of the circle now what we will do now we will connect each point something like this so each point on the on the circle is connected with a straight line to uh, to the apex S. Now, this is a very familiar to everybody conical surface. It's not yet, well, sometimes it is called a cone, sometimes only half of this from this point down is called a cone, and sometimes only the piece from this um, apex S to this plane is called a cone. So whatever the context is, so the cone is something which is one of these three different things. It's either both infinite, uh, infinitely directed pieces of this conical surface, only half of it sometimes is called a cone, and only a piece from the apex to the plane is called a cone. Most likely we will be dealing only with this piece from S to, uh, uh, to this plane, and we will call it a cone. So that's another example um, of, uh, of, of the conical surface, which we will be addressing in a separate lecture, the cones. Now, and uh, one more thing. Is again related to a directress which is on the plane. And let's assume we have polygon something like this and the apex S projects from above this uh, this plane to some point inside the polygon usually it's inside yeah we can also consider when it's outside but usually it's inside now what would be in this particular case if I will connect all points to this particular thing. Well, now this is uh, another very familiar piece. If you consider this conical surface only from this to this, it will be something which is called pyramid. which we will also discuss in a separate lecture. So, my purpose of this lecture was to introduce a conical surface as a foundation for certain other um, 
uh, objects in solid geometry like pyramids and, and cones which we will be really talking about most likely we will not return to the concept of a conical surface at all we will be dealing with particular cases of conical surface but again my um, my usual approach is to introduce something general and then from that general consider specific cases so basically that's it for today um, uh, Oh yes, I wanted to mention one more thing. If you have a conical surface, you actually can flatten it. Which means, for instance, if it's a pyramid, you can cut it along the edge and open up and it will be flat on some kind of a plane without stretching. Now, if you have a surface which is not like conical, if you remember the cylindrical surface also um, has this property if you will um, you, you can flatten it without stretching or, or uh, any kind of distortions um, if it's necessary you can cut it along the uh, along the edge but anyway after that you can just open it up and and flatten it completely why because it consists of lines actually this is also uh, this also con consists of lines and that's why you can actually cut it open it and it will be flat without distortions so that's one thing and what else um, and the last thing which I wanted to mention is it, it, it basically depends on how you view the conical surface you can view it as the surface which is formed by all the points of all the lines which are connecting S to every line on the directories or alternatively you can view it as movement result of the movement of one particular line which connects S to one particular point and then you move this point and with the moving of the point um, the, the, the line is moving and whatever this line actually as a result of its moving whatever points it's going through that would be a conical surface it's actually absolutely equivalent um, kind of a view um, that would be probably the last thing which I wanted to mention about the conical surfaces um, I do suggest you to maybe read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com well because when you're reading something which you have already heard about it, it, it better actually inculcates in your minds so that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.